Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. Once again, we're doing this by audio today due to the conference at Dallas Airport. But we are pleased that we can still reach a lot of people, even through audio as well as video. But today we want to talk a little bit uh, about uh, the most recent uh, tweet on, put out by the president. I generally don't pay much attention to that because there are so many. But uh, Chris uh, is interested in talking a little bit, you know, about this tweet that I find really uh, fascinating. He's talking about the Fed and the recession that's coming, and he uh, claims he has uh, exactly the culprit that's causing all this. And uh, and I'm going to have uh, Chris read the tweet so that we all know exactly what we're talking about. Chris, welcome to the program today. Good morning. Great to be with you and with everyone. Yes, uh, President Trump really came out with a doozy this morning. Uh, I'll, I'll read it. I'll quote. Uh, he said, the fake news, lamestream media is doing everything possible to create, in quotes, a U.S. recession, even though the numbers and facts are working totally in the opposite direction. They would be willing to hurt many people, but that doesn't matter to them. Our economy is so strong. Sorry. So what do you think, well, Dr. Paul? <laughs> oh, fascinating, like all of them. They don't, they don't necessarily uh, reflect the sound economic uh, theory, and uh, I don't think he has pretended to, to follow anything like Austrian economics, but he has good instincts, he's a good political person, he, had, uh, he knows how to stir the pot. And I, w- I was thinking, though, what can I say favorably about this? And the best I can do is that he's correct in saying that the media sure would like to bring on this recession as fast as possible, because, holy man, if the appearance is that the economy is half decent next year, that's going to help Trump. And we can't do anything. I mean, we worked for three, four, five years now lying through their teeth Mm -hmm. trying to destroy this person. But they ought to just let Trump uh, be Trump and then let the chips fall to where they may because we happen to have a few criticisms of his foreign policy and his, and his monetary policy. But this whole idea that the media can talk us into a recession, that's, that's, that's the absurdity of it all. Uh, it, it can have some type of a psychological influence. People may change their habits, but there's only one cause of recessions, and that is the that is the reaction to the inflation that the Federal Reserve causes. And there, there's a lot of causes for that, and we can talk a little bit about it. But why why does the Fed do this? Uh, they just do it out of clear blue, or are there people behind them pulling the strings, or are there people who are sincerely uh, trying to help people have a healthy economy and take care of special interest there's a lot of motives behind this but it, it is it is definitely not the the media that pops up and say oh look out there's going to be a recession and uh yet i think that's exactly what they want if they think they can help they're going to uh pursue that but the recession will come uh, it is true that recessions come and go at different times but there are always a consequence of uh, faulty federal reserve policy and the big sin there is uh, artificially low interest rates that cause excessive debt and excessive mail investment and mail distribution and a distortion in wealth distribution that requires correction. And of course, all the politicians, Democrats or Republicans, do whatever they can to hide it or blame somebody. And I think, uh, uh, you know, the Democrats uh, would love to blame Trump and say, you know, it's it's uh, every bit of Trump's uh, problems, but but the the truth is, it's the Federal Reserve, and of course, uh, Trump would just as soon say, well, <laughs> it's the media's problem. But uh, if you boil it down, Chris, I think it goes back to the fact: what what is the purpose of the Federal Reserve, and what has it been? And of course, it's to accommodate special interests, and uh, it's to accommodate excessive spending, and that is where they all agree. You know, the recipients, uh, the Democrats, the Republicans, the money managers, the whole bunch all believe that uh, wealth can come out of creating a, a creation of new money, and that's the culprit. But uh, I don't think we're going to hear them talking about that. We're going to hear them talking about uh, Trump causing it uh, and uh, the media causing it. But uh, it'll be interesting because the one thing for sure coming from an Austrian viewpoint is it will come. You cannot avoid it. The distortions have been placed out there, and so people should be prepared for it. Uh, and that should be, you know, a, a sort of a, uh, 
uh, a structured preparation for what can come, but that's a lot different than saying, well, the media is going to talk us into a recession and they don't even care about poor people. You know, that it gets to be a little bit political. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Chris, I know that you've been thinking about this little tweet today. Uh, what's your opinion about what he's trying to say? Well, first, I'd like to uh, also acknowledge what you said. You know, there's never been a bubble that hasn't burst, ever. They always burst, and they're created by the Fed. And, you know, we're not coming to the uh, to the defense of the media. I mean, Trump has has uh, pointed the finger uh, accurately at the media, especially with the Russiagate uh, stuff. So this is not, but the president should be truthful with the Americans, you know, whether he knows it or not. He was elected because uh, people were tired of the political nonsense. But, you know, he couldn't, right from the beginning, bring himself to tell Americans the truth. When he was elected, uh, before he was elected, he was truthful. He said, we're in a big, fat, ugly bubble. And then magically out of nowhere, the, when he steps into the White House, it became the greatest economy ever. Now, how the, that's impossible. So we're actually in the same bubble. It's now only bigger, which means that the pain is going to be bigger once it bursts. And to try to point fingers at the media at this time is really an insult to, to, to everyone. Right. And, you know, I think it's ironic. Uh, there's justification for criticism on both sides. But the media really loves to go after Trump when he makes these statements that at times are pretty silly. But uh, because it's sort of a populist attitude that's sitting out there that Trump has tapped into, I think that the Democrats make it worse for themselves. You know, people say, yeah, 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 that just gets them angry at the Democrats. And I think that's what surprised him in the last election. You know, Trump was playing the populist theme. People were buying into it, and, and all the Democrats could do is call him names. And the names in the last two, three years have gotten much, much worse. But that is so much of an effort to avoid the real issue. I think that neither side want to avoid the real issue. And that, of course, you know, is the spending that goes on, because when they spend, uh, they have to uh, tax. And they have to borrow money. Now, Trump now is saying we could help ourselves with less taxes. We could, but it's not going to make much sense if you keep uh, keep running up the spending. But then, when uh, the Fed has, to, I mean, when the Treasury has to borrow money, uh, they have to go to the uh, go to the uh, Federal Reserve, you know, mm-hmm. to uh, to have them monetize uh, the debt. And uh, this this is um, th- this is ongoing, and it, and it benefits. You, you know, you could say, well, it's all the Democrats and the Republicans, which is true. You can say that uh, the, the Trump people and the Democrats all participate in this. But what uh, what they what they have to really uh, deal with is the fact that um, no matter how unhappy people will be with recession and bailout, bailout, take care of me, and all will happen, uh, they're they're at fault too. I mean, how many people want free stuff? Mm-hmm. Guess right now. I mean, when you when you look at how socialism can get attention, even out uh, out of proportion to what they deserve, and the media chimes in and said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And and so this this is saying free stuff, free stuff, and there's no question you don't have to pay for it. And uh, but if you try to counteract that with more distortion of economic facts, uh, you know, it just makes it a lot worse. And that is why uh, we dedicate so much part of our you know, Liberty Report to trying to get people to understand a certainly monetary policy, which has been my uh, issue for a long, long time, ever since I first went to Congress in the 70s. And I think we're making progress, but there's still there's still a lot of uh, understanding yet to behold, because even though people now are saying, well, we don't like the Fed, but they would have a fit if all of a sudden you didn't have the Fed because it would bring on uh, you know, the crash, which is necessary, which will probably come, but no politician can uh, really do that because it's going to be so outrageous. Uh, we have to look at the fundamentals. And when I go back one more step, it's what should the role of government be? You know, the, the founders gave, uh, uh, you know, some role for government through uh, the mandate to the Congress that only gold and silver could be legal tender. So there was an issue. But that's so long gone, you know, from 1913 on up and the elimination of gold from the system and, and all these things. But, Chris, one thing I want to mention that we don't mention enough, and I know we have in the past, and that is we talk about the Fed and they monetize the debt, mm-hmm. but we don't talk a whole lot about fractional reserve banking. 
because when banks get a deposit, they can loan it out immediately, and because of that, and that can multiply. So they create a lot of credit too, and with that, they can buy treasury bills as well. So some of the purchase of treasury bill is uh, achieved through the the increase in the in the credit through the fractional reserve banking system, which is another form, you know, of of counterfeit. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people will complain about the banks because they benefit, you know, with the interest rate spreads and things like that. But they also benefit tremendously by uh, being able to loan out money that they really don't have. That's right, Dr. Paul. And, uh, you know, one thing is for certain, and and, and it's obvious, Trump is not going to want blame if it happens on his watch. Mm -hmm for the recession and we get it and you know what he doesn't deserve all the blame this started uh before him he hasn't helped but it's not all of his fault and but the blame belongs at the federal reserve they are the ones as you mentioned that create the uh booms and the busts by suppressing interest rates and i urge people listening if you're interested in how this actually works uh, look up fractional reserve banking and austrian business cycle theory don't be intimidated by the names. It's not hard to understand. It's just a step-by-step process. But please look it up and maybe even go to Mises.org, M-I-S-E-S.org, to really learn about how this happens. But instead of the president uh, explaining that, you know, we're in a bubble that I didn't create um, and I'm going to try to do the right things to get out of it, he has added to it by constantly pushing for lower rates. He's acting as bad as the Fed along with them. So he really hasn't helped at all. He just doesn't want to be blamed for it. But, you know, for the rest of us, that's that's not a good thing. Yeah, he's acting in his own self-interest, right. his narrow interest, as well as the interest of his friends and allies and Republicans. So they have an interest in this. But I thought there was one sentence in his tweet that I found interesting because he said, they, they the Democrats, or no, the media, they're willing to, to hurt many people, mm-hmm. you know, with bringing on this recession, which is a, is a pretty far stretch, purely political talk, you know, that, uh, but I believe that there's truth to that. I think even though we don't believe the media can create the recession, I think they believe that they can make it worse and that they can blame, blame the Republicans and they don't have a deep concern you know, about the harms that they do. But if you look at other economic matters, how about the foreign policy matters? All these things done for humanitarian reasons and why we have to go over and put on sanctions to get rid of dictators. And all we do is hurt hurt the people, the innocent people of those countries. And the people who do that, Republicans and Democrats, they don't care about those people either. So I don't think that's the issue. I don't think the Republicans are driven by the interests, uh, nor do, are the Democrats. And so the media can play play this uh, same game. But I do think, though, that the uh, Austrian economic uh, theory and the people who believe in it ought to be given enough credit because uh, it is designed differently. It's not there to serve anybody's special interest. It's supposed to serve the interest of promoting individual liberty, volunteerism, per, you know, market choice contracts and at the same time I at least and most all other Austrian economists believe that this is in the best interest of these people that the other groups pretend they're wanting to take care of you know because you, you know it's sort of the in, invisible hand of Adam Smith that, that prompted this where we have had tasted that throughout our history and uh, it's lasted for a long time. So there, there is uh, a definite benefit. But this claim that, uh, that they're doing this on purpose, I believe they are trying to do it on purpose, but they're not even powerful enough to do that. And you have to go back to exactly what you said, Chris, back to the Federal Reserve. It's the creation of that money, which distorts the economy, distorts, and distorts the pricing structure, and it guarantees that there will be a recession. How it evolves and how big it is still is up for grabs, but it will happen. And I think most people are starting to recognize that we're on the verge of it. That's right, Dr. Paul. And I'll finish by saying, <clears throat> you know, regardless of what President Trump says or does, the uh, the government and the Fed have really created a perfect storm for themselves because government spending and debt are at record levels now during the supposed good times and usually 
you know, it's the wrong thing to do, but uh, during recessions is when government spending and debt go through the roof. So what are they going to do during the recession? They're already going to be hitting trillion dollar deficits. Uh, what are they going to do two trillion dollar deficits? I mean, they're really have dug a deep, deep hole for themselves and everything that they're doing is wrong. So uh, what's going to happen? I mean, life is too complex with too many variables for us to have the answers, but there's going to be a lot of confused and angry people that have been lied to for decades after decades. And, you know, for the people that are listening to this show, thank you, because you're one of the people that uh, others can turn to for some sanity and for or some truth. So if we can help in that direct, uh, in that way, that's uh, very rewarding in itself. Uh, very good. And uh, one thing that people have to remember is that when a country lives beyond its means, that's what inflation is all about. They're borrowing into the future and dumping the debt on other people later on. And there can be some apparent benefits. So if you and I were counterfeiting money, Chris, uh, we, we could do pretty well until we got caught. And that's what happens, the counterfeiting of money, the inflation, the fiat money. Finally, they get caught and the people re, uh, reject the money. But if an individual or a company or a country lives beyond it me, its means, and that's what we're doing, uh, uh, certainly with the uh, borrowing system that we're using and all the spending in Washington, that you are destined to live beneath uh, their, their means. And that's what we're moving toward. And a lot of people you know, express some concern. Well, we better watch out. We don't want to be socialist. We'll be like Venezuela, which is what we should be concerned about. And I, I even like to think in my own mind, it can't get that bad. It can't get that bad. But the truth is, it could get that bad because this bubble is an exceptional bubble, the biggest in the history of the world. More inflation, more distortion. It's more of a global economy. So right now they're saying, well, Germany's in a recession, but we're not, and we're going to get by in this time. Now, there's no way this is going to be very global. Even the recession, the Great Recession of 88 and 90, and, and, and which is still ongoing, uh, is global. But this next one, next go around, it will be e even more global. So this is why when you see global uh, plans by other and maybe even new individuals, be aware, uh, because there, it's going to be something that those who love one world government and uh, a unitary government for all world may come across as saying, oh, yeah, well, we want freedom of movement and no borders. But what they want is one uh, new world order and one government that will control everything. And I think that's, that's one of the greatest danger. Of course, the great danger to me is the people who undermine personal liberty and also the people who are willing to give up their liberty for safety and security. And we have too many of those individuals around, too. So we have to get people to have respect and have a desire to live in a free society. That is the only thing that will ultimately correct these problems. But I want to thank all our viewers today and our listeners uh, for tuning in. And uh, please come back to the Liberty Report soon.